Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's a joy to be with you all again. It just looks like I was just here. Uh, <laughs> um, I'd like to talk so much about Hinduism. There's so much to talk about it. But then when Dr. Barbara Lenny sent me this email, she gave me a topic. So I better confine to the talk <laughs> <laughs> and tell you a little bit about Hinduism whenever I can. The topic was for this year, she said, living in peace and honoring fellow man. The two topics in that line. One is living in peace and the other is honoring fellow man. I was wondering why not fellow woman. <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk about living in peace. Why do you have to live in peace? Why? There are two reasons. There are two reasons. If you live in peace, there are much higher goals in life that you pursue. If you don't live in peace, you live like a zombie, or higher goals are through the door. The goal of all religions, Hinduism, Christianity, Islam, the higher goals. You don't really need a religion to teach you how to live. It's common sense. The basic teaching of all religion is that you don't to another, you don't do to another person what you don't want him or her to do to you. That's common sense. That's all there is to it. But then what you really need a religion is to teach you how to reach the higher goal of life to realize your oneness with everything in this universe, your oneness with the Creator, your oneness with the Brahman. So that's number one. So that's number one reason why you have to live in peace. And number two, the most, most important reason why you have to live in peace, because the rest of us around you can live in peace. <laughs> so that's number two. And uh, okay, that's as far as living. Now, how do you live in peace? That, that's the most important question. You know, we know, well, yeah, we have to live in peace. How do you do that? There are two ways to do it. Hinduism teaches two ways. And it's, it has divided the whole life cycle of either a man or a woman into four stages. Dharma, Artha, Karma, Moksha. Hinduism doesn't tell you to run into a forest, put on these kind of robes, or more robes, <laughs> and just sit across like with your eyes closed. It doesn't tell you. It's dharma the karma moksha. You have to pursue the desires of your life, the right kind of desires. And you have to acquire material wealth because that's what sustains you. You need food to eat, you need a roof under your, you know, a roof under your head. So all these things you need. How over your head? From where over your head and the floor and your feet. <laughs> so you need this. So if you, if you don't pursue mature work, how do you get it? How do you going to get to get a beautiful church like this? So we need we do need mature work. So that's our part. And then what's the final goal that the Hinduism wants you to pursue is moksha, liberation, or oneness with God. But if you pay attention, the first word that I used was dharma. Dharma, artha, kama, moksha. All these goals have to be pursued based on one thing, based on the dharma. And what is dharma? Virtue. What is virtue? The laws of God. And how, what, are, what is the laws of God? Like I said, in one simple sentence, the law of God or goddess is that don't do to another person what you don't want him to do to you. As simple as that. If you follow that one law, that is dharma. So based on that dharma, you pursue all these goals and you live in peace. That's number one thing. What is number two? How to live in peace? That peace is not out there. That peace is not out there. Not endless dancing, bing, bing, bang, bing, bang. It's where is it? Seek ye the kingdom of heaven where? Within. 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 And all the treasure shall be added unto thee. Seek ye the kingdom of heaven. Within. And that's where, and the Torah also glorifies me. Be still and know that I am God. So, and physicists, 
DX side, go to that least state of entropy, least state of disorderness, that state of quietness, and that state of samadhi, that state of meditation, and that's peace. And that's not only peace, that's joy. So you don't only live in peace, you live in joy, and when you live in joy, what happens to others around you, your wife, your husband, your children, when you live in joy and peace, how do they live? Enjoy. Enjoy. Enjoy and peace. So that's that's how it is. So dharma is the common moksha. Pursue actually based on the foundation of dharma. Number two, seek the peace inside. And that's as far as living in peace. Now, the second part of this talk, the topic, honoring your fellow man. Again, I'm going to give two reasons. Why do you honor your fellow man? What do you mean honoring your fellow man? Why do you honor somebody? Because somebody has done something that's beneficial to most of the other people. You don't honor a man or a woman because she has stacked a one million dollar for her daughter or for her son. Do you honor anybody like that? No. You honor a person like Steve Jobs where he can pick up a cell phone and fly. You honor somebody, you honor someone like Einstein or you honor somebody who so you honor someone who has done something for the rest of the world or done something like Rashida said who served, who served humanity. And you honor somebody who sacrificed, like Mother Teresa. So there are two reasons why you honor someone. You honor someone because he made a huge discovery or he did something like Thomas Alva Edison, his lights. So you honor somebody who, who discovered something or you honor someone who sacrificed so much to serve a fellow human being. Those are the two reasons why you honor. And then the how do you honor? How do you honor? In two ways. Number one, you see the person, it could be your next door neighbor, it could be someone right under your nose, right in your house, it could be a child, or it could be a daughter, it could be a son that's so much done in school, and little things, it could be right, living right under your nose. You recognize the strength in that person, you recognize the positive quality in the person, your daughter, your son, child, your husband, your wife, you recognize the strength, and that's how you honor. There may be weaknesses, but you want to turn a blind eye to them. What? Weaknesses. Recognize positive qualities. That's one way to honor. And what is the other way to honor? Not only recognize, you encourage that strength. You encourage that quality. You know, last week I learned this from a very good friend of ours who comes to an organization. You know, we have uh, an association called Adi Shankar, Shankar Ashram. And uh, I want to recognize a lady here, Swami Divyananda, who is with me today. And she runs an organization pretty much. And she's like my right hand. Please stand up, Swami Divyananda. She does so much sacrifice. <laughs> she cooks for people, for 20, 30 people who come every Monday to that organization to pray. And uh, she, she does so much. So, uh, there's no time to talk. <laughs> and we have another friend of ours with us today, Mantu Kalabindi. She's the president of an association called Sahara, and that helps destitute women, women in distress, women who are abused, women who are abandoned. And she's an immigration attorney. So far, she helped about 700 women. Mantu, please thank you. That's how you honor your fellow man. Recognize the strength in these people. It could be a child. Recognize the strength. And then first after recognizing, you ignore the weakness. Same thing in you also. You ignore the weaknesses in you because the strength is the God in you. And the weakness is the other person in you. So you don't want to recognize that. <laughs> you recognize the strength in you and develop that. And I would like to finish with a couple of quotes from, from Hinduism. When we talk about peace, this is what comes to my mind, that they, from the Hindu scriptures, this is, what we, this, this is what we say, this is what in the scriptures we say. Om Jau Shanti Rantha Rikshadhum Shanti Prithipi Shanti Apaha Shanti Haushadaya Shanti Vanaspadaya Shanti Vishwedeva Shanti Shanti Brahma Shanti Sarva Gum Shanti Shanti Reva Shanti Shanti Reti Let the 
the sky and the atmosphere be peaceful because they're not peaceful when we have hurricanes. So let there be peaceful. And once they're peaceful, we get plenty of rain. So let the earth be peaceful. And once the earth is peaceful, what we get? We get nice new vegetation, rich vegetation, rich in nutrition. So the plantation and the forest, let them be in peace. Ausha Deyashanti, Vanishpada Yashanti. And then Vishwe Deva, let the whole cosmos be Shanti, not only the genius, the whole cosmos, let it be Shanti. Let everything be peaceful. And Hinduism goes one step further. One step further. It says, Om Madhuhatarutayate Madhicharanti Sindhavaha Bhakti ena santoshadhi madunakta mushosasi madumat partiva gumrajaha. Let not only they be peaceful, let the rivers flow with full of sweetness, madhuvata, let the season be full of sweetness, let the vegetation be full of sweetness, let the, let the dawn and the dust be full of sweetness. Let the entire thing, everything be sweet, sweet, sweet. No pesticides, no hormones. Right? <laughs> Sweetness, that's where it comes to. I wanted to take home this one message that I got from uh, Manju's article last week. And this is a very appropriate thing to contemplate the end of the year. Now we're talking about strength, right? Recognizing the strength in each one of us. How do you define yourself? Define yourself by the strength. Define yourself by the strength, not by your weaknesses. The strength is the God in you. So define yourself by the strength. So I'm going to read the quote right now. If you haven't quite figured out your path yet, take this time to gauge your strengths. What defines you? Thank you.